So hi, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so uh, today is the it's a continuation of uh, our sleep yoga practice, and I am doing this Facebook Live uh, just uh, ten minutes a little bit earlier. So because I have to leave uh, a little bit earlier, so hopefully um, every you know. It's okay. So it seems like a number of you are coming up. So I hope that is okay with all of you. Um, so just today is specifically the talk is about sleeping with the awareness, dying without the fear. So basically, uh, so sleeping with awareness and dying without fear. Uh, so what what is the sleep has to do with the dying? Um, in fact, the sleep has so much to do with dying. Um, in, in a way, the main purpose of doing the dream yoga practice and the sleep yoga practice, ultimately it's like a preparation uh, to preparing to go to die, basically. Because the process of going to sleep and process of dreaming, it's very similar process of um, living and process of dying. So uh, every in one day, one specific day, all the experiences of one specific day, it's like uh, one's lifetime. And one evening before you be going to sleep, it's like a, it's like a process of dying. So whatever happened during that daytime, it has a direct consequences and influences. In the process of sleeping and what happens in in the sleep, uh, the dream and the state of awareness. So day event is directly affecting your process of sleeping and dreams. So same way, whole our experiences of this lifetime waking state is basically it's if affecting in the process of dying, our old age dying, and then uh, it's. It is affecting uh, in the, the death itself, the pardo state of the pardo, so the intermediate state of the pardo. Um, for example, many people who go to war, experiences of war, and so they they often report that they, uh, as they're dying, they're re replaying those moments of the war, and they feel like. Uh, you know the guns and um, uh, the moment of that war, and they feel like a blood, and people are being killed, and just basically they begin to have experiences already, uh, be, even before they are dead. So like that, so experiences are very strong experiences of uh, life. It's very directly affecting uh, the death. So now. So if one can go to sleep with awareness, so what kind of awareness we're talking here? Of course, we are talking about uh, awareness of clear light, awareness of rigpa, awareness of one's, uh, one's pure consciousness, awareness of who truly you are. If this is what we are talking. So when you know who you are and when you go, in, go to sleep, uh, being fully aware of who you are uh, frequently, and then that is eventually kind of helping to build more sense of confidence uh, and, and uh, building a strength, um, able to process the changes better, or, or able to uh, when things you when you change happen in life, you don't freak out so much, you don't feel so much affected by, and as um, as even you're approaching closer to the death, even idea of dying is not so threatening. Even sometimes feeling it's just okay, um, normal. Uh, I am fine with it. I have a sense of peace with it. Uh, we begin to gain those kind of conf con uh, confidences because you are resting in the nature of mind more and more frequently. So if one is able to uh, go to sleep uh, more frequently in that state, then 
you will able to able to maintain the awareness uh, of Rigpa moment you are dying. So then it it protects whole the process of the pardo, and even after pardo, like your rebirth, it's kind of dependent on your, your consciousness before you go to sleep. So it's kind of very important that way. Let's talk a little bit about why is that? Why is it like that? I think that is kind of very important. Uh, you think about um, what is clear light. Um, we we say Vesalji um, Sangje, the Buddha of clear light. So Buddha of clear light is within us. Recognition of that Buddha of clear light. That Buddha it's like a kind of eternal. That Buddha is like a changeless. That Buddha is like indestructible, like a sky, like a space. So when you have more sense of experience of yourself, like a Buddha of clear light, like a unbounded, indestructible, sacred space, then you begin to feel like a sacred space. You begin to feel like that you cannot be, you cannot die, you will not die, you won't be, you, you, you don't fail, you don't, you cannot be destroyed by changes, uh, you cannot be uh, affected by process of dying, death. So you begin to feel those confidence. So when you begin to f those confidence, then you become less fearful. So this is what it's saying, dying with, how you say, sleeping with the awareness, Sleeping in the clear light state, sleeping, sleeping in the state of connection to your true being, true self, sleeping in the state of being rather than distorted, uh, dis, de, um, uh, destructive, uh, lost, uh, fear, but you are sleeping in the state of complete being, present. And when you are able to do that, then you are able to gain the confidence, certainty of changelessness, the sacred space. When you gain that, you naturally you overcome the fear of change, fear of death. So that is a direct relationship. It, it's quite, I think it's quite interesting feeling. It's um, the like for example, the question is during our lifetime right now for example this very moment if you think if you ask a question to yourself are you afraid of changes are you afraid of losing loved ones are you afraid of losing the most stable job that you have are you afraid of losing the the only relationship you have only familiar things you have in your life are you afraid are you afraid of death idea of dying mm. So if you ask these questions, of course we all are different. You know, some of you are feeling, uh, okay, it's okay, it's fine. And some of you are feeling, I cannot imagine. And some of you are feeling already kind of painful, threatening. So we are all different. So the question is how each one of us able to gain some kind of confidence, certainty, uh, in relation to the changes and particularly in relation to the death, can, can I develop at all? Then the answer is simply yes. And how I do? I try to go to sleep in that awareness of changelessness, in that awareness of deathlessness, in that awareness of indestructible. And if I go again, and I have to repeat this again, so then it's affecting me. So saying that, I just want all of you for a moment, for a moment, just let's sit together and meditate. Uh, first of all, uh, breathe out all the stale breath. So whatever uh, discomfort in this moment that you're experiencing, be conscious, be aware.
again breathe it out any discomfort feel the presence of support and blessings of each other the blessings of the sacred cyber sangha beyond time beyond space beyond these conditions we are all connected together and we are all supporting to each other and you only get those supports when you are open toward each other and you when you feel like you are giving support to others and you are open to receive support from others when you have this sense of openness of giving openness of receiving we are receiving and we are giving connected and feel that blessings be aware of the stillness of this moment Be aware of your body, feel the stillness in the body, connect and rest. Be aware of the silence of your speech. Be aware of the silence around you, within you. Feel deep a sense of peace through that silence in that silence feel deep sense of peace in this moment We are all connected to this peace be aware of the spaciousness of your mind be aware of the openness unbounded sacred space this moment we are all connected through the cyber sangha through the cyber the sense of this limitless experience of this connection we are more than Hundred and two hundred and forty people connected. Imagine we can be connected thousands. There's no limit how many people can be connected because of the cyberspace. No limits.
feel that sacred space connection rest in that sacred space that sacred space is the like a mother you are like a child you are resting in the loving arms of mother or universal mother divine mother enlightened mother And if any of you are feeling some sense of a fear of changes, a fear of death, fear of unknown, unfamiliar world, unfamiliar situation, territory, this moment in your life, just simply be aware of them. Nothing wrong because it is the way it is and it is your own state of mind. It's your own experience of the situation be aware of that. Rest deep into that space. Any discomfort, breathe it out. Be open, be present, be aware of that fear. Be gentle, be kind to that fear. You are not that fear. You are not that change. You are this unbounded sacred space, changeless, indestructible, death and birthless, or beyond death and birth. As you rest in that space, feel that sense of beyond birth and death, the eternal being, youthful. You can open your eyes. How do you feel? Do you feel like you have 
heal a little bit fear? Do you realize a little bit more sense of confidence in that relation to that sacred space? Do you feel changelessness? Do you feel like a sky? Like a sky means what? Can you destroy this sky? Can you destroy this space? Does this space can be destroyed? Can anybody can affect this space? This moment, and I'm sitting in this hotel room here, and uh, imagine before this hotel there might be something else. Probably how many things might have happened in this exactly the sacred space. Who would have ever imagined in this space I will be sitting here and doing the Facebook Live and talking about the sleep and talking about the changelessness. Nobody would have imagined that. But I am doing right this moment the same space where so many things had happened. And probably there will be so many things will might be happening, but this space will never change. Always remain same as it is right this moment. So who you are will never change. Essence, like who you are in a sense of true sense of who you are, your essence. Who you are in as an essence you will never be lost. Who you are as an essence never can be found. And the teaching says you can never be found because you have never lost. But the sense of when you feel lost, it needs to realize it has not been lost. It has been always there. I just did not recognize my existence my being. So, this, when you feel closer to that, that is a source of confidence. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say here is, this connection to the essence of mind, the connection to that um, boundless space of mind, connection to that awareness of that space of mind, is the source of confidence of changelessness. It is the it is the through which one can develop confidence of overcome the fear of death and fear of changes. So that is the core message of this particular uh, Facebook Live's webcast. Uh, in the in the Maju teaching, it, it's, it talks about a few things. I just wanted to mention. You don't have much time. Uh, just few things here. It says uh, in the Maji they talk about so like a four periods of uh, four transitions are like together. Uh, so it talk about chi chalam tujinyam jo nangge sansam tujinyam jo sama sama pardo tujinyam jo so our outer our outer behavior uh, how they are, how four periods are connected to our outer behavior outer everyday life, uh, how, how these four transitions are connected to the uh, moment we go to sleep and how these four transitions are connected with the, the pardo, the intermediate state moment of the death. So for example, so it, it some, somehow I think it's kind of important to understand because one day is connected with like one life. One night's sleep is connected with connected and similar to a moment of the death. So, in some sense, we every morning we are born, every night we die. Every morning we are born, every night we die. So, for example, uh, if you, if what happened yesterday night, did you have a did you did you able to overcome your pain identity? Did you able to recognize your pain? Did you able to heal your pain? Did you able to have some peace with that, that pain identity? Did you find the nature of mind, clear light, the Buddha of clear light? Did you connect with that? Did you fall asleep like that? 
Did you feel the effect of that in the, in, in the sleep? Uh, did you wake up with that some effect? So these are all our questions. So if yesterday, if the answer is yes, then that's very good news, right? Good news means if you died yesterday, that that's exactly what, what happened yesterday night. You probably have a realization in your parto. But if you did not have any of those things, instead the opposite, you, you, were, you even forgot to practice. That means you, you, you don't even remember you're dead. Or even you, you did not know how to process the, process the experiences and emotions. You did not um, find any ways to dealing with those emotions and ch challenges. You get, totally got lost into it. You have a nightmare. You have affected by those dreams. Your morning was affected. You got up in a bad mood. Even you did not recognize you how bad mood you are woke up and you went with that bad mood in the world. Just imagine you're restarting another birth of that cycle of samsara. So this is simply a question. So what happened yesterday and yesterday night could represent entire life and the moment of the death. The good news is we didn't die yesterday, but there's no guarantee we will not die tonight. So the every single night is the opportunity to try to do the best if there was only last night, if there was only moment of death happened. So you do have <clears throat> some sense of chances of overcoming them. So he's saying, uh, in the evenings when we, like every evening, we're talking about every evening, in the evenings, let's say the moment we, we decided to go to sleep until we actually fall asleep. Think about a little bit like that moment. That's a very important moment. You don't want it to activate your samsara of the day, you wanted to process the pain of the day, confusions, confusions of the day, you wanted to reflect on them, have peace with them, say goodbye to them, and you bring your sense of present to the moment and prepare to the sacred journey of the sleep. You want to prepare yourself toward that as a very important journey, a little prayer, kind of disconnecting with whatever is disturbing you. And then moment you hit your head on the pillow, moment you're trying to do your sleep yoga practice, and until actually you fall asleep, moment you close your eye until you fall asleep. Of course, that moment is more critical because those moments could be for some people very short moment, like five minutes. Some people can be uh, 10, 15 minutes. But whatever that moment is, it will, def it will define more afterward what, what, what's going to happen. So then, because it is the moment of retrieving, your senses are retrieving inward, your consciousness is retrieving inward, your grosser element from earth, water, fire, air, space, they're going inward, inward, inward. As they dissolve inward, 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 your, 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 your familiarity begin to lose because your gross the appearances are losing, your gross familiar world is losing, more, more subtle sensory experiences becoming more source of awareness, and you're not very familiar with that. But if you're familiar with that, even though you're losing contact to outer world, sense object is, objects, but you're, you are still able to maintain experiences of senses. You, then, once you fall asleep, until you wake up, So this is where like a, your consciousness in a way like become like a nirvana uh, or everything has dissolved. Like everything but like a kind of stops everything. But that is in a way is a very difficult moment because there is no <clears throat> kind of stimulation, uh, same level of stimulation like in during the waking state, same level of duality like during the waking state. So sense of I, sense of awareness, sense of self-awareness is in a way for some people it's very hard to have. In a way, some other people it's very easy to have because there is nobody is interfering. So people who have gained some experiences of awareness, for them it's easy to tune in, naturally less obstacle. But people who are so identified with outer situations, 
for them they lose total connection because there's no reference place anymore. So that period is kind of very important. And then the last one is Torang Shiri Ranlashar. Um, in the morning when you get up, you you moment you open your eyes, you wake up and then you see the world. So that means now moment you wake up until you engage with the world. That period time is also very important. The moment you op open your eye and until you get engaged with the world. Maybe it's like moment you wake up until you get your double espresso coffee. And that coffee is like a is like a way to engage with the samsara, right? It's the coffee is like a, a to awake the ego, to awake the pain, to awake the duality, to able to engage in dualistic samsaric world. Until you take that coffee, until you engage with dualistic world, that period could be hour or more. And that period is very, very important. If you're trying to bring awareness that moment, there is a naturally more sense of presence and clear light there. So these are the like so-called four periods. So that's kind of very, very important to recognize. So I hope that all of you, uh, this some, somehow I hope this makes some sense. How, how, how everybody is doing? How is the meditation? Are you feeling st some sense of more stability, confidence, certainty, stability, connectedness, groundedness, changelessness? Are you feeling sense of okay? You know, in a deep meditation, sometimes that's what I feel. You go in a deep meditation, you feel really like a, so much of that space, a sense of total indestructible. And then if you have the idea of if this is the moment if I'm dying, I'm completely okay. In a, in a way, it's this sense of What's going to ha what what is the difference going to happen? And if this is the moment something's going to change in my life, I will be okay. I will be always protected from my true being, from my inner refuge, from that essence, from the truth. Truth will always protect me. Okay, so uh, I think uh, uh, I started a little bit earlier today. I need to, to leave. And so I um, uh, hope that all of you are continuously engaging with the practice, remembering every evening to do practice, right? Everybody is doing every single night practices continuously? Yes or no? How many of you have forgotten too often? How many you wanted to reinforce this moment? Think about it. You wanted to reinforce. So this is the moment we are witnessing each other and you say, I know I have been forgetting too often. But I promise myself, I promise in front of this sacred cyber sangha, I will reinforce myself to remember, to remember and I will do the practices for the rest of these um, Facebook Live connected with uh, sleep. And then after, after what we will continue, we will be doing on a dream. So afterward, I will continue. So please keep that some sense of um, bring awareness of, bring awareness and some sense of recommitting to to in front of the sacred, sacred cyber sangha. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon. All my love and blessings. Thank you.